everybody and welcome to the penultimate installment of the Disventure Camp interview series. My name is Silly Billy, but you can call me Billy. The Disventure Camp semi-finals are out and boy is it a wild ride. Not as wild as the two guests we are meeting today though. My first guest is a veteran to the Disventure Camp interview series. First proudly showing alongside Genesis and now here to accompany one of his real life best friends. Please welcome back to the show, LJ! LJ, welcome to have you back, man! Hello, thank you so much for having me back. I have prepared a poem uh, for our departing Alec. Uh, I was wondering if I could read it. Wait, oh, really? You have? Oh, that's so cool. Uh, my sweet Alec, my sweet Alec. Alec, you leave behind a legacy filled with form. Go and see your kid. They are waiting at the door. You have left your mark on many fans and they will mourn. Sweet Alec, you are now forever no more. Holy crap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah. God damn. <laughs> that was, uh, I was expecting a lot of things, but that was not one of them. <laughs> I just, uh, I just, I, I've been, I've been waiting to, to get that poem out. Uh, I just did that. Um, but yes, hello, I'm LJ. I've been on here before. Uh, I am Jensen. Uh, we'll see if Jensen does anything in the final episode, who knows? Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm feeling very excited. I've got my Jensen brew and I'm ready to mourn the loss. <laughs> the little soda pop as well. <laughs> okay, sweet. So let me quickly introduce our second guest if he's not already crying from that beautiful poem you just wrote. Um, it was so beautiful. It is, right? So, our second guest is none other than the voice behind everybody's favorite Disventure Camp librarian. Mainly because he is the only Disventure Camp librarian. Please welcome Raytix, aka Anthony! Raytix, welcome to the show! Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm happy it took so long. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, it's, it, it's kind of an honor to only just meet you right now. It's an honor to meet you, the Sally Belly, the Trevor. The tri well, I mean, technically there are like what is it? Oh yeah, Adventure Camp is like four dubs now, so there are like four Trevors true, around. But hey, one of the Trevors. One of the Trevors. Yes, the only one wearing a, a blue suit and um, having a beak. I, I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I checked with Freddy, he didn't have ones yet. Radix, you are of course new to the Adventure Camp series, so can you please tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Who are you? I'm Ray. Uh you got me saying Raytex. It's Raytex, actually. <laughs> Raytex, oh dang it. <laughs> yes, yes. I say this to every single person I meet, so no worries there. Cool, cool, cool. I'm from Scotland. I'm half Irish. I study computer science and voice acting has been a dream of mine for nearly my whole life. And I've been doing it, like, personally for over 10 years at this point. Oh wow, you are a yeah. veteran. Well, not like professionally or anything, but like I'm talking like uh, I read stories out loud and give each character a unique voice. It's a great way to practice and build a range. The one I remember was when we did Dango Ropa. That's when I, uh, that's when I saw did. your voice acting talent. I was like, whoa. Whatever I did was nothing compared to your Monica Meadow. Come on. Oh, I know. One day. One day, I'll get that voice out again. <laughs> he's, a, he's a fun character to voice. Yeah, I, I did a, a Danganronpa playthrough on my channel a while back as well. And yeah, we had the, the different voices going on too. It was uh, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> to hype Anthony up more, he's um, he's just he's just amazing. The yeah. amount of voices that he can do, it is like staggering. I mean, this Alex, Alex voice isn't even his voice. I mean, I don't even know. I know, some people might know that, some people might not. Like, this is his real voice, you know? Hello. Alec is just from there. He's a wandering imposter. It's in insane. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> difference. <laughs> so, can, can you can you give us a little, a little taste? I'm, I may be putting you on the spot here a little bit, but what is, what is, like, your favorite okay. voice to do? Ooh, okay, give me one sec. Hi, I'm Joey. Wow. I'm gonna be a Pokemon mister. Wait, that's you? Is there somebody else in the room with you? That is insane. We are going to talk in this interview about Alec, the librarian character who came to fall right before the end. Get it, get it ripped from his claws just at the end right there. Right, X, now I'm gonna say it right from here on out. What was your opinion on, on Alec as a character? What did you think of him? Alec, when the season began, was a very straightforward, monotone kind of guy. That's the vibe I sort of picked up from him. But it was clear there was more to him. There were seeds being planted, what with his 
small interactions with Fiori early on. Hell, even before the season came out, Alec was one of the most popular characters on the show. I imagine it's because he was one of the new characters, so obviously had the most mystery surrounding him. When the season began, we got a feel for his actual character, which was a lot of mystery. Everywhere I looked, people loved Alec. He was kinda overrated early on? A little bit, just, yeah. Yeah, really the love he got. There, there wasn't a good reason for it, besides the hot nerd aspect. He started off very monotone and seemed like he was in perfect control of his emotions, but as the season progressed, cracks started to show, like when he had to lose his hair or his son was revealed to the world. He started to appear more emotive, I guess you could say. Yeah, sure. I suppose that also overlaps with the way I portrayed Alec. Early on, I was thinking back to his audition line, getting carried away by emotions is for weak people, so I stuck by that idea that Alec is completely monotone, doesn't feel for people and all that. But as the season progressed, as he gets more emotive, I have to be more and more emotive. Especially when the bond between him and Fiora that we'll touch on later starts to play a bigger role. How did you, how did you like go about that? How did you deal with Alec's character getting more and more emotional? Early, he doesn't, doesn't treat her as any different from anyone else. But then he starts speaking more softly to her, starts expressing his feelings more to her. For example, when she was in the cave lost, he expressed his fear for her well-being. It just culminates into the final moments where he just breaks, completely goes at Fiore for not picking him to go to the finale. That must have felt like, like such a betrayal. Alec has this, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's irrational, bond with with Fiore it, it's growing yeah. so incredibly strong that he starts to almost like kind of see her as his own daughter but like Fiore doesn't care <laughs> she's just here to win one-sided yeah now how was that how was that for you when you read that in the script for the first time what what went through your head I looked at it, I was like finally it's just <laughs> it was, see regarding becoming a winner I always looked at it, like what would winning do for the character? And with Alec, winning wouldn't do much of anything for him. As Fiori put it, I'm sure money will solve your marital problems, but she's being sarcastic and she was right. Alec winning wouldn't do anything. So I was always hoping Alec would not make the finale. Well, you got that wish. <laughs> Alec uh, not making it to the finale. I think it was pretty harsh, especially with the the storylines that he was a part of right now. So I, I completely agree with what you said about Alec in the beginning. He was a, a very small background character, mainly because that's what he wanted to be as well. Like, he's just like, ah, keep me out of this. As long as nobody votes me, I'm going to be A-OK -okay right here. And then as the season progresses, he gets involved in more and more of these storylines because he kind of has to at that point. And during the end there, we have, like, he has a, a pretty sizable storyline with Ellie and, of course, a pretty big one with Fiore as well. And so seeing him lose at the end here, it came like a, a big surprise. I thought maybe they were going the James route here, that they uh, kind of made Alec like the, the underdog at, at the end here. So seeing him lose at, uh, at, in the final four was, it was a pretty big shock to me. Really at the beginning, I kind of just saw him as kind of like a stuck up kind of nerd character, um, especially with like the voice that Anthony gave him. But I think the thing that kind of shocked me the most throughout the season was, I guess the emotional like scenes that Alec goes through, the way that Anthony acted, uh, like for me doing emotional scenes, I have a lot to work with on the stage because I have another person or I have a prop or I have both uh, to help me get into that kind of psyche of the character. But when you're voice acting, you're in a blank space, you're in a blank canvas and you have to create that on your own. Like, I'm just wondering like how that was for you as well. I liked to record my lines a bit later, so I listened to what the other people's performance so I could get an idea of how to play off each lane that's that's my little cheat oh that's a that's a very clever one yeah yeah that's pretty good i like that like, did you uh did you ever like rehearse with somebody like uh, fiore or ali as well or uh no no that never happened no. unfortunately okay well well maybe there's always next season right i'm, I'm not yeah. sure if alec is returning next season but i feel like there might be a, a pretty sizable chance that he is alex story is now done 
which means <laughs> we are left with uh, three more characters in the race. Three girls as well, which is I, I think is pretty interesting. We have an all-female finale. That That's also uh, part of the reason why I thought maybe Alec was going to go to the finale after all anyways. But now we have these three amazing powerhouses left and, and the question becomes, who is going to take home the win? And I I was pretty curious what your guys' opinion wa was about that. Who, who do you think is going to win? Fiore. Mm -hmm. Fiore, mm -hmm. really? That's a tag. That, uh, that's a take, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a really good one, but... <laughs> um, I mean, it's more just like Fiori's my favorite. Fiori, I think, is the most fun character to watch. Fiori reminds me of, I don't know if you've, you've ever seen this film. I think it's called Orphan. It's a 2009 horror film. Fiori reminds me of uh, Esther, the character Esther. And uh, from that, I am always going to support Fiori. I'm a number one Fiori fan. And Fiore is going to win just because if she does lose, she'll kill the other two or something like that. Then, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wouldn't put that past her, no. <laughs> yeah, so that's my pick. I mean, Fiore could win. I do think that all three characters deserve to win. Fiore, from a gameplay perspective, given the amount of work and strategizing she's put into this, she absolutely does deserve to win. But looking at her game morally, eh, the only person less deserving of a victory would be you. <laughs> I know it's kind of like people could base the winner on like however they want but like morally I think morals go out the window when you're trying to just win when you need to win your the morals don't matter so that's why Fiori for me best gameplay right best everything maybe not social game but best uh i don't know but yeah i think fiore that's you know? a fine opinion if we're going on the basis of villains fiore is definitely up there as one of the funniest ones i adored fiore throughout this season she's just so maniacal so evil i i loved it i was gobbling it up oh, i just yeah. i just like a good villain i love a good villain and you know i think it's time for the villain to win uh you know, because it's usually a hero, a nice person always wins. Let's let's switch it up. Let's have the villain win. That's what I would. <laughs> I mean, if we're looking purely on let's let the nice person win, I don't think there are many good options left. I mean, we have Fiore, who clearly is not the nicest person here. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Miriam, who has been grumpy and complaining throughout like 80% of the show. <laughs> yeah. And we have Ellie, who I think fits the nice girl trope the best. But then we look back at the previous episode where she kind of told Jake to like suck it up. And if he wasn't such a douche, like he might have still had a boyfriend. And hmm. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if there's a lot of nice people left on the show, to be honest. I know, it's kind of like, maybe this is a metaphor, I don't know, it's like, strongest have to lose all their morals, maybe that's what this venture camp is talking about, I don't know. Oh. We met in here, I don't know. Ooh, oh. could be, could be. To get to the top, you have to lose what makes you human. Wow, there you go. <laughs> Deep. Yeah. Very, very deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, if you could, uh, if you could choose one winner, who would you would like to see take home the win? Are you an, uh, a Fiore supporter oh. as well? I'm not opposed to it, as I said, but definitely the the one I want to win the least. Uh, it's hmm, between Miriam and Ellie. Miriam winning would be good. It, it would show that, unlike with the other two finalists, you don't need to act or play like a scumbag to win. But Ellie, she's fought hard and done what she had to to make it this far. Her position didn't allow her to play the kind of game that Miriam did. Uh, I was hoping we would get in this position because I have been rooting for Miriam like ever since Dan got out. <laughs> so it, it's fun. We have we have three guests on here. Who, one who is rooting for Fiore, one who's rooting for Ellie, and one who is rooting for Miriam. Let's go! I was hoping this would happen. <laughs> so, looks like only one of us can, can triumph, boys. <laughs> yeah. Gotta be I, I, No, it's gonna be, it's gonna be Fiore. Let me tell you, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Right? Sure. <laughs> go ahead. Do a, take a shot, and then I'll tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> let, me, let me let me take a sip of my Jensen brew. Um, mm -hmm. So, Fiore has been overlooked for a long time because she's just a little girl. But look, look at what she's accomplished throughout this whole thing. 
throughout this whole game. All right. She had so many characters up her sleeve in her pocket and gone like that. If Fiore wanted you gone, you were gone. That is respect. And that's what she's going to get. She's going to get respect at the end for what she's been able to accomplish. Unlike these other two that have been quiet, Fiore has been front and center for almost every episode of this. That's true. But at the same time, I mean, hashtag Miriam Miracle. Need I say more? <laughs> <laughs> Miriam has been dominating this game since day one. Like, she's not been doing it as obvious as Fiore has. Who has mostly been doing it like, I want you out, so you are gone. I want you gone, so you are dead. Uh, but Miriam, Miriam has definitely been running this game from the shadows as well. Like, in the in episode one already, Miriam just did not give one flying frick. And uh, from there on out, every single episode, it was all about the amazingness of Miriam. I loved every second of it. And I think the only poetic way to wrap up this Venture Camp Season 1 is to let old Lady Miriam win this. And I, I'm here for it. It's going to happen. I feel it in everything. It's coming. I know it. I will say, even though I'm a Fiori stan, I will say it would be quite uh, funny for Miriam to win this Venture Camp after her not even, like, she wanted to apply for like a baking competition and she ended up on this venture cap and then she just goes and wins it it would right? be quite yeah that is such funny. a miriam yeah. thing to do i love it miriam may be a satisfying winner but ellie's played the stronger game she's she's been in the tougher situations she's fought her way to where she is she's flipped when she needed to flip she's not too bad at the challenges and she's a survivor ellie's been on the outs for a lot of the game maybe the entire game yeah she here she is she's been betrayed so many times girl couldn't catch a break granny that whole verbal beatdown on jake sort of knocks her readability down a bit but it's, i think that's gonna cost her. i think that's yeah but cost neither mm -hmm. jake nor ellie were f completely in the right in that situation mm. that's all i'm gonna say on the matter but i think i think <laughs> ellie's out of it i think ellie's out of it i think it's between fiore and miriam it I would think be if it is between Fiora and Miriam, that would be quite funny. If we have like this finale between like, how old is Miriam? 80 something? And uh, Fiora, uh, Fiora, Fiora, who is like, what, eight? Six? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the dynamic between like eliminating all the quote unquote normal people first and then being left with somebody who is just out of the womb and somebody who's like one feet in the grave, that that is a, a fun way to wrap up this season. <laughs> it's it's a battle of the generations. Like right? The yeah, the exactly. We already have that with this finale. And uh, yeah, I, I, I have to agree with LJ. I think Ellie going down first makes sense. I don't know if there will be like a, a first elimination, though. I have no clue how they're going to uh, go about this elimination. That's true, that's true. Maybe, uh, maybe they're gonna do something like what they did with this Venture Camp Season 2, where they eliminate somebody, like, halfway through, and then we have, like, the traditional one-on-one -on -one finale. Mm. Or maybe they just go the, uh, Redonkulous Race route, where it's basically a, a, a long... Uh, well, no, wait, uh, Redonkulous Race also had, like, uh, a, a third-place runner-up. Anyway, maybe it's like a, a, a three-way race till the end, and there one person wins, and we have a double elimination of the other two. That would certainly be chaos. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine? It would be lovely. And That's Miriam would destroy it. That's what I want. I want chaos. But Miriam wouldn't destroy it. It'd be Fiore's to play. Fiore's no, to win. The only thing that is going to combine Fiore and destroying in one sentence, is Jensen hitting her with a freaking bus. <laughs> because that needs to happen. I am it not going to be to satisfied with this finale if Fiore is not going to be at least a little faced by a bus. Yes, even though I am a Fiore stan, uh, I do want to run Fiore over with my bus. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we can like combine it, right? Maybe we can just hit Fiore so hard with a bus that she goes over the finish line first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then actually, I've got it. I've This is my perfect ending, right? Okay. Fiore wins. I hit Fiore with the bus. And then Jensen is automatically the winner. Oh, crap. Oh. You figured it out. Yeah, there you go. If, so does Fiore die in this version again or not? <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs>
So in the comments, let us know what do you think? Is it going to be a victory for Fiare, a victory for Ellie, or Woo. do you have a sane mind and do you know in your heart that Miriam is going to win? Let us know in the comments down below. For now though, I want to focus a little bit more on the fourth guy, but before we do, I actually want to talk a little bit about you guys, if that's okay, because you guys are pretty good friends in real life too, right? Yeah. We are, yes. How long have you guys known each other? Oh, oh. let me count. I yeah, let me count as well. I think it's bordered on 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Like we met at the start of high school. We met in that club, didn't we? We did. Yeah. We met and, in <laughs> and then, I think a year later or something, you were brought into our friend group. And I had no idea you were the same guy until, yeah. like, after we left or something. After we left the school. <laughs> this is actually crazy. Like, in our friend group, the first person I met in this friend group was at Ritex from a club that we went uh, that we went to. <laughs> so, <laughs> is this friend group still uh, together? By the way, we are. Yeah. Yes, oh, that's are. cool. Uh, they have been watching uh, this venture camp. It's been it's been good. Like um, even even that whole thing as well. I I am an actor. Like I I I do a lot of like plays around like Scotland and stuff like that. And I, I've always wanted to like see you act either in a play or like doing like voice acting and you were the one who, who found this you were the one who found this uh yeah. This yeah i saw the dc2 casting call way back and i thought about going for it but at the time i didn't have a great setup so i didn't really even bother but then i saw yeah. the dc1 casting call and took it as a sign to finally get my foot into the voice acting scene since yeah. i've been wanting to do it so long yeah because i so remember I... it because you you dm'd me uh yeah being like, uh, I want to get into voice acting. What equipment do I do I need? I was like, okay, you're gonna need this. You're gonna need that. You're gonna need this and that. Here's the mics that you should look at. Here's the <laughs> here's the soundboard that you should look at. Um, stuff like that. And did one of you drag the other one into that hobby, or was this a a shared passion that you both had, like, um, separate from each other? For me, I was encouraging you to like get the equipment and then you told me about the dc1 uh I did, yeah. and uh we were like oh okay you know what let's just both go for this you know um can you remember who you auditioned for like everybody i auditioned for all the males i think bar one of them i don't remember which i think nick and alec you i use the same voice for i i auditioned for nick i really thought i was gonna get nick <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, was like, I could do an english accent they thought your english accent was so bad they gave you the russian guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, they used the voice i gave uh, for tom really yeah so you you auditioned for tom as like a a secret russian spy then yeah basically and then they were like oh can you do jensen and then we kind of agreed let's make him a wee bit scottish as well why not you know just kind of throw it in there is he russian is he scottish who knows maybe he's a mix of both <laughs> Or, as I said, I had my theory that I did the last time I was here about uh, Jensen watching Brave and then making his whole personality that. I still hope that is just canon. Maybe between, like, like season one and season three, we get, like, little little shorts, like, little up-to-date how, how are people, <laughs> and we get just, like, a little short of Jensen watching the movie Brave trying yeah. to be like Merida. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you guys say we are going to watch this episode together? Let's see the inevitable downfall of everybody's favorite librarian. I'm so oh. ready. I'm so ready for it. I'm, I've prepared myself emotionally for this moment. With another poem. I might, uh... <laughs> another one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. Three, two, one, bam. Previously on this venture Fine. camp, the campers went cave exploring. Would have been a fun time too if it weren't for the crippling darkness and the festering giant scorpions. In the end, Alec won immunity. I love those scorpions. With Jake and Alex. Right, yeah. He got roasted by Ellie so badly that it carried all the way to elimination where he was sent home. Only four I, are I left. I have to admit something. Wait, pause quickly. I have to admit something. When I first read about Jake getting roasted, I, I wasn't really paying attention to the words that were being used. I was just happy that that jake got put in this place a little and so you can hear the enthusiasm in my voice which is like actually just me being happy that i get to tell that jake got roasted <laughs> that's kind of how i did the patreon shows i was smiling overall but alex just sort of frowning the entire time oh really <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, same with me here. You can pick a little genuine silly Billy happiness up from from within the Trevor line there. <laughs> you do these intros so well. They get me right in the mood for my dispenser, uh, Phil. Ah, thank you so much. Uh, they are so fun to do as well. Even I get hyped from them. So it's it's. I, I think it's going well. <laughs> we'll be voted out tonight. It will be voted out. It's a big mystery. Could be anyone. It could be. <laughs> only, I like the finale. Out. It was me carrying the body. <laughs> Just casually carrying <laughs> a body Just there. Carrying. Gonna miss that. Day 26. It's <laughs> so graceful. If 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 you are part of season three, can you just do all of the 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 audio clips in between all the sound effects? <laughs> if I'm, can we if get I'm like the, back. yeah? Can we get like the Jensen cut from this fiction camp? Is it food? No, better. It's letters from home. Oh. Eh. <laughs> uh, give this to Fiora, please. Anyway, see you in a couple of hours for the challenge. This is my cat, Biscuit's paw. Aww, my neighbor Joey so is cute. taking care of him. There's also... There's also a photo of my husband and son. I wish they were here to see how far I've come. Aww. I bet they'd be proud of me. I got a letter cute. from my dad saying how proud he is. And three unpaid bills. If my father's letter didn't motivate me to win, this definitely will. I, I don't know who pointed this out. I, I think it was uh, it was JPEG, I believe. Maybe it was me. I don't know. Anyway, so one of us, uh, when when proofreading this this episode, pointed out like somebody went through the effort of of billing that that unpaid bill to the island for Ellie to find there. Like it couldn't go to her home address. No, it had to find her there. Yeah. Or it's a family member who is like sending her all the unpaid bills <laughs> on this show, which is maybe even better. That's crazy. I didn't I, I didn't even think about that. I said <laughs> Here you go. I finished this one too. Wow. You're faster than I thought. How many books does Alec have? Like on the camp? Here, he just came prepared. <laughs> just an entire duffel bag. I really hate them, what? don't you? Ah, this is why Fiore is my favorite. I'm sure it's she my doesn't give a shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I don't care. In a few days, I'll be a millionaire and I'll have several slaves to do whatever I want. Exactly, <laughs> slaves. Oh, um, actually, maybe not the slaves, but <laughs> Miriam, they're called they're, they're called not Miriam. <laughs> Fiore, they're called butlers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear you. You secretly want Miriam to win as well. No. <laughs> I can read between your lines. <laughs> no. Regardless of whether I win or not. I like how we're laughing over this emotional Alec moment. <laughs> Oops. I'm just thinking about the amount of butlers that you can afford with seven million. You know, like. <laughs> What was in your letter? A few bills to pay, but it was good to hear from home. You know, if you want to pay those bills, we have to vote Alec out. Yeah, I'm not sure if I could beat him in the finale. Don't worry. No matter what, I'm not voting for you tonight. You're tough, but Alec is tougher. We could try to flip Fiori to our side, although... Those two are very close. I'm not sure if it's possible. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. Keep they're on so, dreaming. They're so close. Come to your next challenge. Today's challenge. Oh, a bit of a uh, bit of Alec bought here. Nope. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. That's going in the TikToks. <laughs> in the final three. They also will be able to decide which member of the losing couple will join them in the final. Will we pick the teams? No can do, buddy. The teams <laughs> will be random. Take these rocks and those who match in color will be the teams. I love how Derek just gets more smug with every episode. I really enjoy it. <laughs> Steven does a great job. Yeah, right. Fiora and Miriam will be facing off against Alec and Ellie. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm stuck working with Alec. This Again. is why Fiori is a winner. We're screwed. No, we'll we're do screwed. a series of many <laughs> challenges throughout the day, consisting of typical camping activities. The first team to win three of these- This might be random to say, but is Ellie ginger? Or like, really light brown hair, you know? Ooh. I'm pretty sure it's ginger. I think so too. How is this a camping activity? Maybe she's a really dirty blonde. <laughs> That's something I, I want. I want forums finding out what is the hair of Ellie. It's over with already. Go do it, guys. Make Ellie TikToks. Discuss her hair. <laughs> Here I come. I would have lost it if you just added that in, like, in a very calm and collected Alec just going, Wee! <laughs> Wee! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait, bye. What are you doing? Yeet the child! Ah! Oh. Ah! Oop. Yes. Oh, that was so elegant, Miriam. Okay, maybe I'm becoming a, uh, a Miriam fan now. Let's go, LJ. Threw me, and we didn't even win the point. Yeah. How I hate that. Oh boy. Oh. I'm not I saying that, that I'm taking sides, man. <laughs> but judging from these teams, this could be a stinker. A good old-fashioned game of tug of war. Each couple will be on opposing sides of the rope and pull with all their might. Gee, I wonder how this will end. Mm-hmm. Puddle will win the challenge. Is there even a point in trying? Uh, it's a, it's a Fiore and Miriam win, of course. Easily. Miri Miriam's got Miriam's got the strength. You know, right, she's fair. like a, a a multiple gymnastics uh, champion, right? She can row, she got that upper body strength. Right, yeah. Archery requires a lot of skill too. Oh, bye. Never mind. Oh, God. They are really. See, that's going to be Fiara with a bus in the next episode. away from taking immunity. Not saying I called it, but Trevor, you owe me $5. Let's have a little break, shall we? You can go to the dining room and we'll see you in an hour for the next challenge. Sorry to interrupt. I wonder if that line was improvised as well. I know that Stevie's been improvising a couple of lines, but like, <laughs> I, I can't remember that one from the script. I love when improvisation's getting. Right, yeah, it's so fun to do. That's a big question. What do we do? <laughs> Me and Miriam are toast. Don't worry. When we win, I'll just convince Ellie to keep you. Do you think she could be persuaded? This is the same length as Fiora's head. <laughs> that croissant is huge. <laughs> That's not how you eat a croissant. No. No, that, that feels illegal. That is criminal. Can we now eliminate Ellie, please? <laughs> Yeah! Oh. oh, here we go. Oh. Trevor jamming. Oh. Let's go. Oh. oh, it goes so hard. Oh, God. Oh! oh. oh. He's got the moves. What are you doing? Just working on the flags for the finale and jamming out. Come on, groove with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. I love that line. I loved it so much. We still gotta clean up the north side of the camp. We don't have time for this. But dancing is such a great way to release some stress and to have some fun. According to my horoscope, it is the best way to express your feelings. Maybe for you, but I'm pretty sure that that entire dialogue was improvised. I, I don't re fully remember, but if it was well done. <laughs> <laughs> the the horoscope part for sure was not in the original script. Nice. The, the little joke uh, he made as well was was I believe was improvised. <laughs> Any minute now, and I want this camp fully cleared out. No more wildlife, so we can film in different areas without the activists getting all up in a bunch. The animals here aren't that dangerous, right? The animals here do tend to get quirky at night. Oh god, no, not oh, another no. one. <laughs> Guess you have a point. Still, maybe we shouldn't kill all of them. We don't need to do it! Jensen will! I do not see an issue, as long as the public doesn't find out. 
Well, maybe not put that in your final episode then, guys. <laughs> Tools. You must build a bonfire. The first team to have fire wins the challenge. Alec and Ellie are in the lead with two wins. Fiore and Miriam have to pick up the pace to stay alive. Not with rocks. Oh. Ellie, cover the oh. fire and blow. I'll go get the wood. Okay, hurry. He trusts her so much. Uh. It's not misplaced at all. Uh. What was that? Come on, Fiore. Help me. Uh. What happened, There's Ellie? Something fishy I, going on here. I don't know. Fiore and Miriam <laughs> managed to complete their campfire and win their first point. Yeah! We did it! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Moving on to the next challenge. Ooh, this one's gonna be good. <laughs> For this challenge, we have two flagpoles. Players must climb up the flagpole and retrieve the flag Yes! The top. Yes! Yes! This this is my Oh! This is my favorite survivor challenge. Alright? <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes. There's, there's a season so, Survivor Palu, was Palu, so, Tom and Ian, like, the flagpole challenge, it's unmatched. It's so good. <laughs> Ellie, get on. Way to go. You got it. Uh, yeah, almost. <laughs> what are you doing? Grab it. Oh. Oh. Oh, wait a minute, this isn't the flagpole oh, challenge that I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Kick the baby. Yeet the child. Here, I can't catch a break. <laughs> no, right? <laughs> She's going to die by the, by the end of this episode. <laughs> end of the episode, a bus comes. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, Miriam's wee walk with the hands so up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a little shimmy. <laughs> it's a little shimmy, yeah. Finals. I don't know. Is that what you're planning? Yes. We will have a better chance against her than Alec. You and yes. I can also work together to become the final two after that. Oh. <laughs> you devil. <laughs> Let's go, Miriam. We're going to see which one of you wants this money more. Each contestant must hold into a ball and stay on it as long as you can. Oh, th this is this is what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that, this is, I was this, gonna say, is this it? This is it. <laughs> go ahead of yourself. I said, yes, yes, yes. There we go. This is it. All clear? Yes. This is the best survivor challenge. Yes, because you're small. What kind of camp did you get these challenges from? <laughs> a TV show that we're not allowed to mention. No. <laughs> so wait, you're saying we have to be the survivor after this? this starts now! Miriam's already one layer down. <laughs> She's not even beginning. I, I can. Ah, point. Point. is out of the challenge. Her fate now lies on Fiore. Uh, this is difficult. Uh, how are you, Ellie? I'm fine. You don't seem like it, though. Let me handle it. You're much lighter than me. Do you think you can last longer? Sure. You can leave this town. I'm just struggling. Uh-oh. Day. Okay. Oh, uh, complete faith. Fortunately, I can't have us winning this. Uh-oh. What? Why did you do that? Fiora is lost at her post and scores the final point for her team! Mir I'm sure no one else will betray Alec like this. Uh-oh. Uh Faces, jerks! I'm in the final! It's so annoying. I love it. <laughs> right now, you have to decide who you want to go up against in the ultimate million... I mean, Ellie's pretty stupid. Like, how would she... I mean, yeah, I get that 
Ellie is the weaker con uh, out of them too, but like, would Fiore not always kind of choose Alec? I mean, she she has to be happy that he that she didn't, right? Who's Ellie? And I won't yeah. change my mind. But Fiore's smart. True. Who knows Ellie's the easier one? He'd never betray Alec, though. Mm -hmm. I really liked you, and that's dangerous. Because feelings are for weak people. Oh, God. That's the audition lane. Oh, no. Alec didn't even see it. Winning against Ellie and Miriam. But after all I've done, I protected you this whole game. I helped you win the zombie apocalypse challenge, saved your life in the cave, covered up your plan so no one would suspect you're a psychopath, and you still eliminate me. Yes, thanks for... <laughs> Bye. But I don't need you anymore. Oh, come on, Alec. Out of everybody, you're the last one who should be talking about feeling betrayed. This doesn't concern oi, oi, oi. you. Keep it to yourself, Ellie. It's such a karmic elimination. The spice! It's so satisfying. He's the gone. <laughs> Look at Ellie hunching over like she's really enjoying this. <laughs> the spice. And I don't care. Oh, and I bet you'd know a lot about making mistakes. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, she did not. What did Alec do to you? Those girls made finale? What? Who will win it all? Fiore, Ellie, or Miriam? Fiore. It's gonna be Fiore. Miriam. Fiore. Easily Mir Miriam. It's gonna be Fiore. I voice the, I voice the host. I get to say who it does. No. <laughs> she deserves it after the hardship she went through. Dang. He got robbed. Alec absolutely got destroyed really? by the end of that. Like, there was no need to go this hard. Yeah. Pretty, pretty uncool of him to snap what? up for Yuri like that. Holy crap, the uh the shout outs to the patrons become longer yeah. and longer. Like this is five minutes of Alex just saying <laughs> names. Pause it here though. That was that was quite the episode. What a dramatic semi-finals that was. What an ending to Alex. Right? Yeah, I I feel a little bad for Alec. Like he has been yeah. one of the main villains for this entire season. But for Fiore to, like, betray him without even feeling an inch of remorse and then just kind of kicking him while he's down, that's sad, even for Alec. He's been loyal the entire time. Right? That's yeah, there was there was no way for Fiore to go this harsh. <laughs> so, Fiore went unnecessarily harsh. Ellie went unnecessarily harsh when she tried to convince Jake of Tom cheating. The only one who did not go unnecessarily harsh is Miriam because she's going to go unnecessarily harsh in the finale when she beats all the others I'm calling it right now surely <laughs> oh man oh I can't wait the finale it's it's almost here we're going to enjoy it soon oh man and Ellie's gonna win wait what <laughs> Ellie's gonna win no no yeah, yeah. no LJ back me up here Ellie's not gonna win right Ellie is not gonna win. Uh, there's no way. There's no way. Right. It's, be it's between it's between Miriam and Fiore, and it's gonna be a Fiore win. No. Uh, so I have to say on the matter. No. So right, takes back me up here. Fiore's not gonna win, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> He, he's got nothing to say. He's got oh. nothing to say because he knows. He knows. Crap. He knows. Right, X now. <laughs> <laughs> Fiore will win. Oh, Fiore. Alex stays loyal to his allies. There you go. Keep, <laughs> oh, keep okay. All right, sweet. I think that's going to wrap this episode up right here. Thank you guys so much for joining me again. It was such a fun time having you on. I know. I've oh. I've loved it. Yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Seriously, I've watched all of these so far. They've all been amazing. I just hope this one is up to standards. Maybe it's the best one. Who knows? Let me know in the comments which interview do you think is the best. Gotta make that little pluggy. <laughs> Speaking of little pluggies, <laughs> uh, Ritex, I'm gonna start with you. Where can people find you if they want to see more of your beautiful rat face? Well, I don't really do a lot of social media, but I'm always active on the Disventure Camp server, so if you ever want to send me a message there, I'm 
probably gonna see it. Sweet. Okay, that's that's really yeah. short. That saves me a lot of sure, editing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> LJ, where can people find more of you if they want to? Yeah, let me just uh, make you work harder for you. Uh, <laughs> Seven thousand uh, channels follow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it? Uh, Instagram will probably be in like the bio. LJ Aiken. Uh, I am on Discord as well. I'm not as active as uh, Alec as Rightix over here, but I mean, if you do send me a message, I will. I will read it. Uh, LJ today. Oh, I, I think that's about it. I think that's about it, really. Oh my! So I thought it's... there was more. I have a website, but I don't really use it. But I mean, if you know, uh, this, if you type in LJ plug Aiken it. on Google, I'll, I'll plug it. There's. A, I have a website, LJ Aiken, on Google. And if you're already busy with, well, no, that's not really true. I was going to say, if you're already busy subscribing, but there were no YouTube channels here. Well, let me throw my own in the ring. If you're, <laughs> if you want to eagerly subscribe to either of these people, but can't, but still feel that urge to click like this nice, juicy subscriber button, then feel free to do so below this video, which has this nice little subscribe button, which gets you up to date to all the future Disventure Camp interviews that we're going to be doing. I say interviews, so but it's probably only just the one that's still coming. Maybe not, but we'll see. Uh -huh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. well, a little, uh -huh. little, little sneak peek. I mean, three guests in one episode seems like a, a, a tad much, right? So maybe we need to do a little, little special something for the finale here. Also, go join Odd Nation Cartoons, of course. Subscribe to their channel as well so you can stay up to date of more episodes to come. Not only of this season, but I know from a little birdie that told me that season three might, may or may not be in production and may or may not be coming relatively soonish. Who knows? Oh, and right, oh, right, one more thing. Um, go check out the uh, announcement post I made a couple of days earlier about uh, the table read that we're going to be doing. Are you guys going to be uh, present for that as well? Yes, yes, we absolutely are. Oh, I am as sweet. well, yeah. I'm oh, sweet. Okay, cool. I, I'm probably going to be there as well. I, I don't know my schedule for, for the day itself just yet. But I'm, I'm definitely going to try to clear as much time that I have for this because it sounds like a lot of fun. And it's for a good cause as well. So if you have some spare money, go save it up for that charity event that we're going to be doing alongside the Q&A and table read for the Disventure Camp cause. It's going to be awesome. A lot of the voice actors have already signed on for it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It really is. I'm so excited for it. And, yeah, um, me too. And uh, Alec, Ritex. Could you, to end this episode off, could you say one last famous line that is my favorite Alec line? And if I had to guess, you which already line know. Is. You already know what it is. I know you want to say it. I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, I think there's a faster way to say this. I wonder if you can, mm. you know, yeah. <laughs> Why? Why does everyone always put me on the spot for this one lane? <laughs> I think there's a faster way. There it is! Hey, there, it is. there we go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Beautiful. Oh. That, I think there's there's not a better way to wrap up this episode. Guys, I am going to thank you once again. Thank you so much for joining me. I have had I've a heard. lot of fun. I've had so much fun. I've loved every moment. Uh, to be able to do this twice is such an honor. And uh, I can't wait to go back and uh, watch this and then look forward to the next interview. I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye. See ya. Bye. bye, -bye. All right, to wrap up this video, I want to give a special thank you to the Silly Billy members Hoshi Moshi, Mephers, Callan Strembu, TD Freddy G. Immer Gaming, Avi Koopa, and of course, Gieter Geit, who has now become a tier 2 member, so many thanks for that. For now though, I'm quickly gonna go away, because I have a lot of editing still to do, and I thank you for watching as always. Stay tuned for the final episode of this interview series coming up soon. This has been Silly Billy, and remember, groove on! Howdy!